Okay, good morning. Manufacturers today are really talented. They can take a piece of crystal like this one and do one half of it with positive charge and one half with negative charge. And the way they do that, they actually add, let's use the negative charge, they add pentavalent atoms. And if you remember from previous videos, These are atoms with one electron in the valence orbit. Uh, we're talking about phosphor, arsenic. So if you picture each one of these is, in, is actually pentavalent atom. Let's say it's phosphor, for example. In the loss orbit, in the valence, there's a negative charge in it. So each one of these atoms has one negative charge in the outside orbit. So I'll put like uh, nine of them here. And on this side, on the positive side, they use trivalent atoms. Trivalent atoms is like aluminum, boron, they actually have holes in them or they have a positive charge, one extra positive charge. So if you look at each atom here, it needs one more to make it eight in the valence electron. So it's missing one. So this crystal is actually, it's a balanced crystal, unbiased. If you look at all these electrons here, if you count them, there's nine of them. If you count how many holes we have here, there's nine of them. So as a whole, this crystal is actually unbiased, does not have any extra charge in it. Now, this junction here, this line here, is the border between the p-type and the n-type. It's called the p-n junction. And this junction, this kind of design, has led to all kind of inventions like semiconductors, transistors, diodes. They're all designed based on this logic there. So when you look at this semiconductor, this crystal here, it's actually is electrically neutral. As I said, there's no charges in it. There's no net charges because the number of the plus charges, the holes here, equals the number of the minus or the electrons here in the n-type. This p-n junction, by the way, sometimes it's called the junction diode. There's another name for it. The word diode or dye, if you look, the word diode actually is a concatenation of two elect electrodes where the word dye or that DI stands for actually two. Now what happens when you put all these negative charges here, all these plus charges here? Well, the negative charges don't want to be next to each other. So actually they're pell the repulsion for each other. They're going to push the electron away. Well, as you push the electron away, some of these electrons actually tend to spread in all directions. Some of these electrons will actually happen to cross this junction. That's called diffusion. When a free electron diffuses, travels across this junction, the electrons on this end becomes a minority carrier. There's notice there's a lot of plus charges and there's one negative charge here. So the plus charges are the majority carriers and the electron is the minority. With that many positive charges, with that many holes, that electron is going to have a short lifetime. 
immediately is going to recombine with one of these holes. Every time an electron actually travels across the junction, diffuses across that, it creates a pair of ions. Again, if you remember from old videos, ions is you have positive and negative charges. When the electron leaves this end type, this side here, it leaves behind a pentavalent atom that's actually missing short one negative sign or one negative charge is one electron, which means that atom right now is actually positively charged. And when that electron comes in here and recombine with one of these holes here, that atom here, let's assume this atom, that atom right now has one extra electron in it, which means it's negatively charged. Now, what will happen as each pair of these negatively and positively ions at the junction is actually called a dipole. So a dipole is a pair of these negative, like when this current, let's take one of them. When this current leaves here, and this hole here, when this current comes from here, recombine with this one. Now this atom here is gonna be positively charged and this atom here is going to be negatively charged because this one lost one electron, this one took one electron. That's what a dipole is. So what dipole means when you look at the dipole, it's really the creation of a dipole means one free electron and one free hole have been taken out of the circulation. It's no longer available here. They're gone. Now, this process called the depletion, or in this area becomes the depletion area or layer. So what will happen as these electrons actually leave this end and recombine with the hole, if you watch that crystal, that crystal will look something like this. Now we used to have nine of them there. Now we're gonna have maybe six left here, or four of them. I'll just throw a few more. I'm not gonna do a lot of them. And this one here, this area, is called the depletion layer. So right in this depletion layer, you have a lot of dipoles. You have all these guys who combine, recombine, and they're sitting right there. Well, guess what happened? Each one of these dipole has an electric field. So let me just move this aside. So each dipole has an electric field. Between positive and negative ions. So what's going to happen next? Let's go back to that picture. This is a depletion layer. Oh, um, this is just a dot here. This is the minus. This is the plus. If this electron now wants to go across this depletion area, 
the electric field that we have here is going to push this electron back. It's not going to allow it to go through. It's going to push it back into the N type, the N area. So this electron wants to come all the way there. This electric field here is going to push it back. It says, nope, get back there. This electric field is actually called, or the barrier potential. So this electric field that we're talking about is called the barrier potential. And this field is approximately, it is approximately 0.3 volts for germanium. And approximately 0.7 volts for silicon. So there's a field pushing back. That's this electron, you can't enter. It's 0.3 volts right there, pushing these electron back, these holes back. So if you wanted actually current to travel through this diode, then this is what we have to do. We have to, I'll go on the next page here, or another page. And that's actually going to take us to something called forward bias. Is my depletion layer. There is my negative area. This is my positive area. So what will happen now if I attach a voltage source right here of value V? Notice I'm attaching the negative side here and the positive side on this end. This kind of connection is called forward bias. The negative attached to the negative, the positive attached to the positive. So what's going to happen? This source here is going to push the electron, because that's negative, is going to push the electron to this end, is going to push the holes to that end. If this voltage is large enough, or if it's small enough, for example, if this voltage is less than, let's talk about silicon, just, just silicon. If this voltage is less than 0.7 volts, no current is going to go through that diode. That's not big enough to break that barrier. But if that voltage is large enough, if that voltage is more than 0.7 volts, then this is going to force these electron actually to push across that depletion area. If it's germanium, we need roughly 0.3 volts across them. So again, if V is less than 0.7 volts, and if it's silicon, for, we'll use silicon here. That means no current will go through it. It's going to block it. And if our voltage V is greater than or equal to 0.7 volts, Again, we're talking about silicon only. For germanium, is less than that. Current now will flow through the crystal. It's going to force the electron to go across the 
depletion region there. And as long as this voltage is 0.7 higher, current will continue to keep going through it. Now, if you just want to watch what will happen to one electron to see just to understand what will happen. After the elect once you apply this voltage, the electron actually will leave here, start to push on these. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's electrons going to leave this source, going to travel this way. It reaches the negative region. When that voltage is more than 0.7, that free electron has enough energy in it now to go across the depletion layer. Soon after it goes through the depletion layer, the free electron will enter this p-type. So the electron will come from this end. And if this voltage is 0.7 higher, that free electron will travel through this junction here, then will enter the p-type. It recombines with the hole immediately. Another way of saying it now, this electron, this free electron, becomes a valence electron. It's sitting in the outside orbit. When it leaves to the left, it's going to be recombined with this. Then it will start to jump from this hole to this hole to this hole, back to here, and repeats itself. And since we have millions and millions of currents there, or electrons, not currents, electrons, that means we will have continuous current going through that if you attach forward bias. So let's talk about reverse bias. What will happen if you reverse that source and see? So this is reverse bias. I had to look and see if the camera is recording actually. Now the reverse, reverse bias here. There's that junction here. I'll make it skinny there a little bit. And there is that electrons, the extra electrons here. That's the negative type. This is the positive type. the holes, the p-type here. So what will happen if I attach my source backward, meaning put the plus on this end, the minus on this end, plus to minus. Once you do that, quickly, that's called reverse bias here, these holes will tend to go to the left because that's a negatively charged. And these electrons will start to go to the right. That depletion area becomes even larger. The size of this area will continue to grow. It doesn't stop. We'll keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So this depletion layer will get larger and larger and larger up to a point. To what point? It will stop growing once this voltage here, the difference in potential right here, is equal to that source. Once this source equal to that number, that depletion area will stop. And in this case, when you have reverse bias, no current will go through the crystal. So no electron will travel. Travel through the crystal, which means your current I is going to be zero.
For most diodes, that's what's going to happen. Reverse. But what happens if this voltage that you put there is really large? We're not talking about 0.7 volts, a large value. Well, if you do that, you might actually destroy that diode. So let's talk about something called breakdown. So there's my crystal again. I'm just going to say N type and P type on it. I think we had enough, we know. N type and P type. And this is the depletion layer. So, what happens if I attach a large positive, I mean, reverse source here, reverse bias? All diodes on the market have a maximum voltage rating. It will tell you on them that this diode can handle up to this value. That's just like a limit how much reverse voltage a diode can withstand. If you go beyond that, if the value increases, you will destroy that diode. So if the value of this source is larger than Maybe I should write it down. If V is larger than the maximum rating the maximum voltage rating that you see on that transistor the die the diode or diode here will get destroyed And this voltage is actually called the breakdown voltage. So this voltage is called the breakdown voltage. Now, how big that voltage? Are we talking about thousands of volts? No. For many diodes, breakdown voltage is about 50 volt. So we're not talking about 1,000, about 50 volts. Now just to give you a little understanding what will happen, if you put 50 volts here, you're actually going to force all these negative charges, electrons we had here, to go right here. They're going to go on that end. And you're going to force all these positive charges, all these holes, to go on the depletion area right there. That's what's going to happen. A large number, not all of them, but a large number of these minority carriers suddenly appears in the depletion area right here. And when that happens, current will flow and the diode conducts heavily. Will conduct heavily. Which means current is going to flow through it. And that's how these diodes work. So a quick summary, you need forward bias for silicon roughly 0.7, for germanium 0.3. Once the voltage exceeds that 0 0.7, 0 0.3, current will go through it. Reverse bias, if you put 2 volts, 3 volts, 4 volts, 5 volts, nothing is going to go through that diode. It's going to block everything. 
But if that voltage increases, that's the reverse bias here, but if it increases to a number such as like 50, now this diode's in a breakdown voltage, which means the diode is shot, it's destroyed, and now current actually will flow through just like if it wasn't there. And that's really all you have to know about diodes. And forward bias, reverse bias, and breakdown voltage. See you in the next video.